Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have another good example of how to employ our general strategy on solving RC, RC circuits. These are first order RC circuits. The circuit is a little bit different the way the, the batteries are placed. So you can see in just a moment we have a 15 volt battery here, we have a 7.5 volt battery and the switch here closes at T equals zero. Notice we have a 2 and a 6 ohm resistor and one third ferret capacitor. The strategy again is we first find the velocity, uh, not the velocity, but the voltage of the capacitor at t equals 0. That's just before the switch closes. Then the voltage across the capacitor when a large amount of time has gone by. It doesn't have to be infinite time, but a large amount of time. And we find the time constant, which is the product of the resistor and the capacitance. And then we use the equation here that the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time will be equal to these quantities right here. So we start out first finding the, the first three things. We want to find the voltage across the capacitor before the switch closes. Well, before the switch closes, this source right here, this voltage source has had plenty of time to put 15 volt across the capacitor current should not be flowing if this is being connected for a while and so we'll have 15 volts across the capacitor but in other words it'll be plus 15 volts going from there to there so we have a 15 volt rise and a 15 volt drop from there to there if I call this here V sub C and I call this the zero volt point then sure enough the voltage across the capacitor will indeed be 15 volts at t equal to zero so starting with this voltage across capacitor at t equals zero will indeed be 15 volts. Now the second one is going to be a little bit more tricky. We want to find the voltage across the capacitor when a large amount of time has gone by when the switch has closed. When the switch closes current will be flowing around the circuit like this. Now if this is the zero volt point, let's see we'll use a different color, then when t is approaches infinity we know then at this point this will be at 15 volts. We know that this will be at 0 volts because it's connected to this point right here. So this will be at minus 7.5 volts at this point in time when a lot of time has gone by. So notice then there will be a 22.5 volt drop going from this point to this point and that voltage drop will be across the two resistors. Well, if 22.5 volts drop from there to there and this is a 2 ohm resistor and this is a 6 ohm resistor. 2 ohms is one quarter of the 8 total ohms of resistance. So one quarter of the voltage will drop across this resistor and three quarters of the voltage will drop across that resistor. So we can say that the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor is going to be equal to the total voltage drop of 22.5 volts from 15 volts to minus 7.5 volts and then multiply times the 2 ohm resistor divided by 2 plus 6 ohm resistor. So in other words, that would be 2 eighths or 1 quarter of 22 and a half volts. So 22.5 divided by 4 is 5.625. 5.625 volts. That's the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor, which means that this is at 15 volts and we subtract from that 5.625 volts, the voltage across here will be as follows. So we say V across C when time is equal to infinity, that will be equal to 20, nope, not 22.5, that will be 15 volts minus the 5.625 volts, which is equal to 9.375 volts. So that will be the voltage across capacitor when time is very large. So let's say 9.375 volts. So next we need to find the time constant. So the time constant is equal to the resistance times the capacitance. But now what is the resistance in this circuit? Well when you look at the resistance here, notice we have a resistor here, we have a resistor there, and we have a capacitor. So as the capacitor is charging, notice that we have a single path through the capacitor and then two paths coming around back to this point right here, which means that these two resistors are basically in parallel relative to the capacitor. So then the resistance 
can be found by the product of the sum r1 times r2 over r1 plus r2. So in this case, that will be 2 times 6 divided by 2 plus, plus 6 here. That would be equal to 12 divided by 8, which is 1.5 ohms. So the resistance to be used in the time constant will be 1.5 ohms because they are in parallel. So this will be 1.5 multiplied times 1 third. So 1 third of 1.5 is 0 0.5 seconds for the time constant. So now we found all three of these for step one. Now step two, we're going to use the equation. And the equation tells us that the voltage across capacitor as a function of time is going to be equal to the voltage across capacitor at an infinite amount of time, which is 9.375 volts, plus the difference of the voltage on the capacitor of 15 volts minus the voltage across capacitor at infinity, 9.375 volts, multiplied times e to the minus t over tau, and tau is 0 0.5 seconds. So we can see that the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time is 9.375 volts plus 15 minus this, that would be 6, oh, not 6, that would be 5, 5 5.625 volts multiplied times e to the minus 2t over seconds. That might be a better way to write it. And there's our equation. And just to get another example of this, let's say we want to know what the voltage is across the capacitor after one second. So the voltage across the capacitor, when time is equal to one second, that it's going to be equal to 9.375 volts plus the five, I keep wanting to write six, 5.625 volts, be a five, multiply times e to the minus 2t per second, and of course in this case instead of t, we write 2 times 1 per second, and now we need a calculator. So we have 2, make that negative 2, take that as an exponent, and multiply times 5.625 equals, and notice, this will be equal to 9.375 volts plus, and what does my calculator tell me? Uh, 0.761 volts, so plus 9.375 equals, and that will be equal to 10.136 volts after one second has elapsed. All right, so there's a good example. Again, a little bit different in this case because we have two, uh, two sources right here and it's kind of interesting to think about that. This will be a negative voltage over here and a positive voltage there. We have a total of 22.5 volt drop but across the two resistors. So once you have that picture in mind, then the rest is fairly straightforward and that's how it's done.